Hey developers, so welcome to the final video of this series. So from the previous video, we created our own custom defined console object, which allowed us to store the usual logs that are in the DevTools here in our own custom array, which will allow us to loop through it and display it in this console right here in this video. So just to recap, if I press run now, you can see that we get the console right here and we get our array that we created in the last video and we have each message in its own object with a class and a message. So depending on the class type, we will format it in a different way. So jumping into the code right now, uh, you can see that we have our array right here, console messages. So in our events right here when we click the run and reset there are only two functions that we need to define right now so one is to print to the console once we run the user code and also when we um, do a reset click the reset button we need to clear the console messages just like that so inside our editor lib right here I'm going to create two new functions, which are going to be uh, clear console screen. And we're going to say another one that's called uh, print. Let's say print to console. So we'll do print to uh, console right here. So the names are pretty uh, self explanatory. Uh, for this one, what we're going to do here is first things first, we want to uh, empty out this array right here of messages. So we'll set the console messages um, the dot length to equal zero. So this is essentially um, assigning it back to an empty array. And now the last thing we need to do is remove all uh, elements in the log list in our, in our custom console. So for that we'll need to grab some elements from the DOM and for these ones we'll grab, let's see, we'll need uh, the console screen and we'll also need the list of um, logs. Okay so never mind, all we're gonna need is just um, the log list, the unordered list where we keep all our logs. So if we go back to the index.html right now, this is the one that we need right here. For each list item that gets appended here, we're going to remove all of it. So we need to get this element right here. So I'm just going to call it console log list, and we're going to do document the query selector. And we'll grab the class name, which was editor uh, dot editor double underscore console dash logs. So now that we have that, uh, we can loop through with the while. So while there is a first child in this list, so essentially if there's a list item there, then we're just going to remove. Um, that item. So console log list dot remove child and we're going to remove the first child until there's none left. Just like that. So onto the print to console method now. What we're going to do here is loop through our console messages and we're going to create that list item and append it to the log list. So if we do console messages dot for each and then we can say for each log and run a function so first I'm going to do uh, let's say new log item and then we're going to do documents dot create elements so this will, this will create a li tag and we're also going to need uh, let's say const uh, new log text and I'm going to do another document that creates elements and this will be a pre-tag for pre-formatted text. So I want to keep everything 
uh, as it is preformed, and I don't want HTML to do anything to it. So it'll keep the line spaces, uh, spaces, and, and everything like that. So now, what I want to do now is to set the class name um, to this text right here. So if you remember, our logs will be an object with a class and a message. So to set the class name, we can do new log uh, the text, and we can do class name will equal to log dot class, which will simply look something like this, and a log let's say is a string. And then in the CSS, we will set the color of that text right there. Now I also want to set the actual text, what the log message is. So we can do new log uh, item, sorry, new log text, and we can do text content, and which will be equal to a template string, because I want that angle um, bracket there. And then we can just do log.message. So now all that's left is to append it to our uh, the pre tag to our list item right here. So what we can do is just say new log item append child and we'll do new log text. And then we also need to append this ally to the actual console log list. So we'll do a console log list append child and append this new log item. So from there we should be able to test this out and see if we get some results on um, the page. So inside the browser now, if I run this, we should get something right here. And we don't. Uh, let me have a look and see what's wrong. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't actually call the function right here, so nothing would happen. So we need to do the editor uh, .lib and we'll run these functions. So, so for the run button, We'll do print to console, and for the reset, we'll do editor lib dot clear console screen. Now back into editor now. If we click run, there we go. We should get something right here. And if we do another console log, uh, that's not right either. Let's have a look at this one now. So back in the code, if we don't clear um, the actual console like we did here in the reset, when we click run, there may still be other items in the array right here. So we need to clear that as well. So I'm just going to copy this and just going to paste it right here. Now back in the editor, if we run this again, it should work. So running this, we get one here. And if I copy this and do hello world 2, we should just get two items logged out which we do right here. Cool. Now the next thing is to style these a bit better. So let's jump into the CSS. So opening up the, let's see, the editor-styles.css. Uh, so this is where we left off last time. And right now, what we can do is start to do the, oh, that's not, do the editor console. So we can start by doing the, uh, let's see, the dot editor underscore double underscore console dash logs, which will be the main unordered list. So from here we can do, let's do a padding of 10 pixels. And we can also do a list style of none. So the next thing we need to do is just to edit uh, the pre tag we're going to do with a dot editor dot long score console dash logs and we'll do the ally and pre now i'm going to set the font size uh, the font size to 0.9 m and i'm going to set the font family to be uh in consolata with the sans serif right here so you might not have this font installed, but if you go to the Google Fonts, uh, you can get that and import it in the CSS right here. 
So I've already gone ahead and done that. And I'm just going to import it right here. Just like that. So now there's another thing I want to do just quickly before we go back. Uh, so this is looking good now. I also want to have a more of a defined border here in the left column right here. And to do that, we can actually um, target something of ace, which is this. We can target this ace gutter and do a more defined border. So we do example here. We can do border left, five pixel, solid, and red. Let's say, uh, let's say red right there. I'm going to do the same thing in our styles. So I'm going to do the ace underscore gutter. I'm going to do a border left of 5 pixels solid. And we'll get the variable of the editor dash border. I'm going back to the editor now. Uh, refreshing this. We can see that it has a better blue color right here. So the final thing now is to style these colors right here. And that is simply to just style these different log um, types. So inside the code now, just to give an example, I'm going to do a log right here. Uh, so I mean log uh, dash dash default. So this is the default if there's multiple arguments. And we'll just do a normal color of just a black. So triple zero will be fine. And let's say we had a string, which was dash dash string. Uh, I want this color to be a kind of green color. So I'm going to do this uh, hex code right here. So 48BF0A, a string, a green color right there. So if we get back to the editor now, this is the green color right here. And if we had multiple arguments, say 1 or 12, it becomes just a normal color. So I'm going to copy and paste the rest of these in right now. So as you can see, these are just different types. You have a string, uh, a number, boolean, undefined. So you can change these colors to whatever you want them to be. But essentially in the end, I just tried to match it to be like MDN. And this is what I came up with in the end. With all that done now, I would say that this uh, project or code editor is complete now. It can function correctly. So let's just do a couple of examples here. We'll just do a normal string. Uh, we can also do, let's say, an object with the name of code archive. Let's print that out right here. So this is working as expected. And let's see, it's all good right here. So there's still some improvements to be made. It's not the responsiveness could be better, but you can just, you would be able to do this with some media queries and extending the width. But essentially, we've reached our goal of replicating the MDN code editor. So with that done, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'm thankful that you joined me on this uh, code editor series. If you have any other series you'd like to um, see done, let me know. And if you like this series and this video, let give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.